spread the fire. What's up, people? Welcome to SMWX, episode three already. And I am so excited. Not only did we cross 8,000 users already, only week two, this thing is starting to snowball like crazy, but I am joined by comedian extraordinaire, one of the most interesting people in the public eye, I think, right now in South Africa, and just an all-around intriguing person, none <laughs> other than Nomani Nakazi. Yes. Tumanina. Correct. The inimitable Nina Hasty. Thank you. Hello. How are you, Cesar and Paul Welsh? <laughs> <laughs> so we met on a cruise. Yes. And we nearly felt like we were going to lose our lives. Absolutely. So this. We were going to lose our lives to not only the the Benguela current <laughs> <laughs> that was surging underneath us on our way to the Portuguese islands. Um, I'm ready for this interview because. <laughs> Because I just know that like I'm also gonna get like some shade and I'm I'm ready for it. Okay. Like, just okay. being on social media, I don't know if you find this, but just like you see the worst of human nature as a public figure, <sighs> and the best of it sometimes. Um, and I, I think especially with this election and and just what you've been involved in, with which we'll get to later. But just like social media as a phenomenon is is quite something to deal with psychologically. Um, you know. Uh, and just to go back to that, uh, you know, I, I I say a lot of things in jest, right? And there's just to kind of break the ice because mm. I live in that space. Mm. Um, but uh, I'm going to start at the beginning. So stand-up comedy in South Africa is only 25 years old. It's as old. Well, I mean, there, there were other people that enjoyed that space, but I don't recognize it outside of democracy mm. because it wasn't the voice of the people and sure. it didn't reflect... Uh, a, an authentic space mm. because 25 years ago it was illegal for us to collect in multiracial groups late at night talking about politics sure. it was so our our sense of humor as a country is in its infancy mm. so things like satire and irony and um are very nuanced uh I want to say advanced, but maybe maybe that's patronizing. Very nuanced comedic spaces, mm. and that doesn't always translate in text. Can I can I ask your just your views on on the intersection between that nuanced world of satire and comedic commentary and the world of politics itself? Because you occupy those two worlds in a very unique way, and I just wonder how you see them them intersecting. You know. Um, so everyone's like, Nina, are you ever going to go into politics? I'm like, well, you know, since I was young, I was on every council, like rewrote the school code of conduct at really? age 15 and sat with like members of outside. I've sat on the governing body from standard seven. That's grade nine. So I was like 15 already dissecting how we could give students more of a voice and give people more of a, an a, an equal space. Mm. I couldn't understand why my black friends were always late for school. And then my mm. friend was like, hey, "Give me, let me take you one day, mm. and um, let me take you to the hood." So I grew up in uh, Pretoria yeah. in the Willows. Mama Lodi was our uh, feeder sure. area into our school. We had a completely integrated high school, which right, was was right. amazing. Uh, sort of like almost, I think, 50-50. It was a very integrated space. Mm. Even back then. Even back then, okay. in the 90s. Yeah. yeah, that's and which was which was quite remarkable. Mm. And so what we did is like members of the executive SRC went to our friend's house and he uh, you know his family welcomed us into the home and for the first time because ha I had seen what it was like mm. for my school friends to grow up in a completely different space where not everybody had access to hot water in the morning uh, where not everybody has access to transport that you know the, mm. that there's this collective uh, you know or, you know, for want of a better word, Ubuntu, but also just a logistical nightmare to get to school, yeah. you know? Um, so just trying to create uh, an environment where people had enough rights to, you know, without being expelled for being late for school because yeah. actually you have a logistical issue to get there, you know? Sure. Um, so was that... So that was the beginning of my interest in right. in a, a political space because my my mm. thing is mm. always giving somebody who doesn't have the perspective of th the thing. Have mm. you have you what have you read uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? No, actually. So there's like their solution to end all wars is this thing called the point of view gun. All right. And they shoot the point of view gun so that everybody yeah. would sta understand someone else's point of view. That's that's really cool because I suppose both the comedic and the political 
is attempting to represent various points of view to absolutely views to others. absolutely so there was a time where a lot of my comedy was like i am the wokest white i'm or i'm the wokest white mm. i know the most about black culture but mm. i was problematic in that space as well also i was the first person trying to mm. you know uh, navigate those spaces in a comedic way. Mm. Yes, there were problematic elements of it, but it was more semantics. One thing I think that stood in my favor is that I never, um, my comedy was always coming from the inside of the culture, mm. as opposed to coming from the outside of the culture, uh, belittling it or mm. mocking it or whatever. It was more going, here's something ridiculous mm. that we are all doing. Yeah. And um, I'd like to ridicule this thing until you see the need to change the thing mm. yourself. Mm. So, I mean, I would go through this hair thing where I lost my hair due to stress, etc. Mm. And I've got this gag about how I didn't know where to buy wigs. But that in itself mm. gives me the permission to make jokes about sleigh queens and weaves and things like that. Mm. Because mm. I was also in a position where I was broke and I needed to buy a hair. And I, you know, like, sure. um, <clears throat> so I had a, an insight to the inside of that world. Whereas mm. if you're just like this privileged person who's lived on the, you know, the, in a, in a space where you've never been challenged mm, and you just mm. come and talk about like weaves when you never needed one. Yeah, you're from um, the outside. You're from the outside in, right? coming in. How dare you? You don't have the permission to say that. Are there things that you feel like it's easier to say in the comedic sphere and vice versa? Are there things that you feel like it's easier to say when you're, you know, writing a column, for example, which you do, or if you're at a political event, for example? Look, um, if you have a specific value system, I would hope that that seeps through into all of your spaces. You must understand in television, there are a lot of boundaries within which I have to mm. work. 90% um, of what we do is scripted. Obviously, we try and add our own personality to it, but I am a television presenter. I am presenting information yeah. that is scripted and brought together by writers and producers of a show. Sure. I happen to be Nina Hasey that can perform this material in that space. Rather but well, I might uh, add. Thank you very much. Um, hence the SAFTA nomination. And hence we're here. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, but when I'm in a stand-up comedy space, um, I can go, okay, I'm the author, I am the director, mm. I am this person mm. presenting this information to you in a very vulnerable space without lights, camera, action, smoke and mirrors, um, which is why when it doesn't land, it's so devastating. Mm. Yeah, because it's um, all of you. Right? Yes, cause sometimes, uh, and it's also about like, uh, so we, we there's a term we use in stand-up comedy called status. Mm. So if you play high status, and it's that same thing again, if you're coming mm. from outside of the culture down, you seem, unless you maintain that status throughout your performance and you're like, this is the stance I'm taking. Mm. This is something I don't, fuck this, you know, da, da, yeah, da, da, yeah. this is something I don't believe in. Uh, you need to change. A lot of people do that very well. John Flissmas does that very well because hmm. um, he takes that stance and he carries on throughout. Uh, Celestine Dooley does that very well. Mm. That's a very, she takes a stance on something and she defends that concept. Yeah. I do a bit of self-deprecation See, the thing is, I used to I used to change status in my performance mm. because sometimes you write a bit and then you add it to another bit, but your personality has changed in between those sure. two bits of material. So then you've got to actually adjust it. So I've, I've looked at all my old material and gone, oh, that's problematic, that's problematic, that's problematic. So what I do is sometimes I'll do that gag and then call myself out on my own problems. Mm. So I'm like, ah, oh, you know, I used to do this thing where I did Kwaito or Kwai Hop. I had cornrows. Mm -hmm. I was trying to integrate society by, you know, in immersing myself in the culture. But I didn't realize how problematic it was, mm. you know. And then I ripped myself apart in that space. And by doing that, I'm showing you, the audience, how this is something that you can do and this is something that you can't do. That's, that's really cool because sometimes I feel like with the artificiality of politics, mm. Politicians, I think across the world, but maybe also in our country, feel like they have to be these perfectly consistent human beings. Mm. And you never really get the complexity mm. that you can bring to bear and, and, and actually admit, like, I was wrong here. And yes. I've changed or I'm inconsistent yes. and I have this tension. And it's really cool that you're able to do that in the comedic space. And then I think that also brings your political voice more nuanced because people aren't expecting this perfect person. Who, who then the dream gets shattered. You know, Absolutely. They're like, cool, this is a person who's as complex as I am. Absolutely. And so I wanted to move on to some of the political stuff because okay. you know, we're, cool, we're moving cool. on to the election now. Yes. And I'm just fascinated, A, by the fact that 
unlike many celebrities, mm. you have actually come out publicly supporting the ANC. Yes. And that's a really, in some ways, a courageous thing to do, especially as a young South African, because I can imagine you get flack from like really angry black South Africans yes. who are like, you're legitimizing this party that we now have come to despise and white South Africans as well, like, hey, what are you doing? Also legitimizing the ANC with your whiteness, which is crazy, right? Yeah. So just, just talk us through like what it's been like for you actually explaining and, and publicly showing your support for the ANC and what that's shown you about our country. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna answer this in two things. So bring me back because sometimes my ADD like gets That's what like, I'm here for. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna answer this in a, so sometimes people are like, because no, you know that I just did this roast, right? So yeah. I just did the Comedy yes, Central know. roast. Everybody's been on my case. Mm. There was a, there was obviously massive exaggerations of my my persona, and it was mm. also written. It was a scripted thing mm. written by other stand-up comedians right. who don't know anything about me. They actually just know what I talk about on stage, mm. and then have confused my persona with my with me as a human being. Right. But that's okay. I I have. Uh, given permission to that because I've now subscribed to this arena mm. that we all play in. Cool. Sure. Um, there's a question that I get asked a lot. It's like, Nina, why do you date black guys? And mm. I'm like, I'm 35 years old, right? Mm. At 35, it means I've lived through apartheid. I've lived through the shift into democracy. I'm the first wave of teenagers or adults that have moved into integrated spaces and into democracy. A lot of the people that I know have homes, jobs, um, degrees, uh, spaces, access, agency, mm. because of the sacrifices that their parents made. A lot of my friends, because I grew up in Pretoria, there was all the mm. diplomats and people that came back from exile that went to school with me. A lot of the exile kids, I always make this joke, I'm like, exile's a real country. It's where people come back with American accents. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> but, I, I, I enjoyed that space, right? right? right. Um, for me to find a white South African male my age who doesn't have an undertone of racism because they've been affected by mm. the status quo mm. or by the, uh, the, the systemic racism that is still very much present in this country is very challenging. So, and also I'm 35, so a lot of people are already married. Mm. Um, <laughs> but apart from that. But yeah. apart from that, no, uh, there's that. And there's this underlying mm. Mm. concept mm. of entitlement. So had I followed the trajectory of my life of, okay, a middle class white South African with access, connections, mm. privilege, mm. Um, without having gone through the things that I did, you know, that I lost everything and experienced absolute poverty and felt what it was like to be a South African citizen that was ignored mm. by its government or and its people. So being a pedestrian, for example, mm -hmm. you know, we as like the middle class ignores pedestrians, is resentful of people in taxis. Those people, in, they, they, they blame the taxi drivers, but you're not considering the 12 people that need to get to the jobs, which is most of the time servicing you. Sure. I hear you and, and, and I think particularly in our generation, because mm. we're so impatient and because we don't have the context of apartheid, we mm. can often take the things that we take for granted for granted. Absolutely. Right? And I think that is an interesting way of looking at perhaps why someone might support the ANC, mm. right? Because yes, things might be tough in your immediate day-to-day -day circumstances, but taking a long view might give you a little different perspective. Absolutely. Um, and because a lot of people have, have have asked us, you know, a lot of our viewers, and thanks to all our, our viewers for all your questions that, that make it through here, you know, just like, why? why? Why do you support the ANC? And I think hearing it from you will be interesting and added a different layer because it's a voice that people don't often hear that argument from. Okay, great. Um, so, because I started doing all this revolutionary stuff, so some, so some of my comedy I've brushed, brushed off those comedic uh, notebooks and taken some of my old material that wasn't landing then because it was so out there for people. Mm. Imagine talking, like making fun of racism in Pretoria in like the early 2000s. People yeah. thought I was nuts. I was booed off stages. <laughs> I remember these two Afrikaans chicks sitting in the front of one of my shows, like in the 
the yeah. beginning stages of my career and they were going literally can I swear on this thing please okay by, they by were like means. fuck you bitch fuck you bitch that's what they were sitting huh. like saying this while I was performing and wow. I was doing this whole like like um spoof of a white hmm. uh uh woman who's an estate agent trying to sell a house to black people who now have agency and mm. money uh, that are moving into the suburbs and she keeps making these racial faux pas so she goes and this is the master's bedroom i mean the master bedroom <laughs> sorry uh, you, yeah. um, you can't, can't say that anymore um yeah okay and then don't be afraid of that black guy in the garden he, uh, he's my friend mm, um mm, mm. I, his name is yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, so yeah. like that kind of thing. So I brought those gags back because they they were too early. They were before their time. It was mm. well. Then again, maybe that gag planted a seed in someone's head, who then had a conversation with someone else, mm. who, which has sparked a large part of this woke revolution. Okay, no doubt. But I'm I'm also just interested in like how that feeds into. Public support for okay. the ANC. All right. right, okay. Thanks for bringing me back. That's <laughs> fine. Um, so my thing is this. I'm going to use a, a metaphor. Mm. If I want to get, um, let's say I want to get organic honey into every pick and pay store in the country. If I want to make sure that organic honey, because it's good for HIV, cancer, in, in immune mm. systems or whatever, I want to get that thing into every store in the country. Would I go to the boutique store that you know represents and has like incense and crystals and mm. all the stuff where you think honey should live and yes and it holds up the integrity of the honey or would I go to the biggest distributor mm. in the country in order to make sure that honey reaches the people I hear you so like if, if we want to change something on a mass scale with the inconsistencies of the ANC notwithstanding that's the only vehicle 100% okay. and then so and it's it's actually really useful to hear these arguments because mm. I think like that's that's a totally different way of thinking about yes. it. You know, sometimes people go up and they defend the indefensible in all parties. Mm. Um, but I think acknowledging where it is is an interesting way of coming at it. So what do you say to people who say, sure, honey distribution, let's get the, the, the most mass based honey distributor. Yo, yes. but this honey like there's a problem here, like the corruption, the lack of service delivery, the honey looked good. Mm. In 94, mm. was, I was putting it in my tea, mm. but now it started actually contaminating the tea. Absolutely. So, like, it might be contaminating that space, might contaminating that space, but it's still getting to more spaces than it is if it was in that one little shop in Hyde Park, you know? And if I'm involved in that space, then I can go or, and I can address it from the inside to the distributor. I can go to the marketing manager or the, the sales distribution guy and say, listen, um, here's your problem. And I'm not coming from an, uh, I'm not attacking you. Mm. I'm coming to you as a, for want of a better term, a comrade and saying to you, listen, my guy, can we just sort out this situation? Mm. And the thing is, if I'm alone in this, you know, tonality is a big thing. Um, and being welcome into a space is a big thing. So, you know, I didn't want to uh, mention other parties in the space because mm. I don't believe in breaking other people down in no, order to ahead. endorse something else. Sure. Um, but from a tonal perspective, I don't feel that my views would be accurately represented in other spaces. Sure. So sure. I think that this is a space where there's a lot of people with the same ideology, same people that understand this the same thing. Yes, there are rotten apples and yes, there are but if, uh, if the young people don't join that space and fix the corruption and we just leave the oldest liberation movement in the country that gave so many people, young black millionaires, um, integrated spaces, freedom, no war, if I don't get involved and take my stand within that space and help it fix itself, then what am I doing as a South African? I'm just creating more drama by attacking other things, like by breaking it down. Like, it doesn't make any sense to me. It doesn't make any sense to me any other way. What's it been like, you know, just also because I know, and, and I alluded to this a bit earlier, from white South Africans, because mm. I'm like sick and tired of, Whenever it's like, let's get a white South African's perspective and then we bring Afri Forum to yeah. the table. And it's like, there are, <laughs> there are millions of other views a lot more progressive than what we call the white South African view in South Africa. Yes. And it's like people, because that view hasn't been given a platform, that there's a progressive white voice in yes. South Africa. Yes. 
people are now suddenly surprised that there's a white comedian who supports the ANC, when, when in actual fact, why should that be? Why should that be a problem? And I'll tell you the answer to this. Mm. And I blame, I blame two things. Yeah. One, I blame fear. Okay, mm. so we live in this, there's two revolutions that are happening at the same time. So there's this industrial revolution um, and uh, there's our own revolution as South Africans. Mm. There's this awakening, there's a, a claiming back of self. There's this, mm. you know, black consciousness movement which is being championed by wonderful people such as yourself. Mm. I think that that is very powerful. There's also the Twitter generation mm. that is, Twitter is such a wonderful space, free of hegemony. Okay, so here you've got this um, this democratic revolution or this uh, black consciousness movement in a space where it has a voice. It doesn't have any control of white media or uh, you know white supremacy or any sort of uh, white patriarchal mm. uh, hegemony, which is mostly what controls all other media spaces. Um, it is is this space for people to be free. But what's happened in that space is there's this woke police that, that have decided mm. to uh, call people out on racism, things like that. Yes, that's important. Absolutely, because we need to re-socialize. There's no state-run re-socialization program, so we've taken it upon ourselves. Mm. However, not everybody is qualified to re-socialize other people. So they're taking tidbits of the zeitgeist and applying it to what they think they should do and calling people out, stopping their businesses. So what's happened is you have this liberal um, ally that could be helping the progress of South Africa. Um, you've muted the voice because those people are now too afraid to say anything. You know, mm -hmm. like even my mm -hmm. family members, lovey, stay out of politics. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you're gonna say something wrong, mm -hmm. then it's racist. And, and you know, I, and also I don't even know what's going on in politics. It's too depressing. Mm -hmm. It's so depressing. Mm -hmm. Everything is just so hectic. <laughs> and, and that is the general so view cool, of yeah. liberal white South Africans. And that's, that's why I'm, I'm really encouraged and inspired by your decision, even though I may disagree with a mm. lot of what you say. And, and what the ANC says. I think it's fantastic that we have public figures actually pretending, not pretending like they don't have views. Yes. And it's, it's, it's a beautiful testament to our democracy. Absolutely. Which is one of those things that we take for granted, that yes. we can have these views. Yes. You know, and if we can speak, then we must. Absolutely, so. absolutely. So, I wish we could talk for, for hours. And we had hours on the cruise, but yeah. we didn't have a longer, we should have had a longer <laughs> conversation. It's um, cool. We have had some, some funnier questions as Okay, well. okay, yeah. I want to hear the questions. Bring yeah, it. like, someone was like, your, your, your eyewear game is just unlocked. Yes. Like, where do you get your... My eyewear. Okay, and, so and they were like, where do you get the, the frames? And who's on the side of the frames? Okay. I need to know this now. So right. the red ones that I often wear, because um, I was like a rookie at glasses. I only started wearing glasses okay. two yeah. years ago. And I just went to like the closest optometrist and I saw these frames only to discover later that they were like only stocked in certain elite stores. Oh, wow. And I didn't know that I thought all glasses were expensive. Mm. I didn't realize that I forked out like triple what everyone else was paying. Look at these WMC uh, tendencies. Yeah, you know, I didn't even realize. <laughs> <laughs> uh, exactly. Anyway, mm. so. Um, okay, various people. By the so way. they're called Theos okay. and they're from Belgium. And actually, I should go and speak to those people because they should endorse me because yeah. I wear their stuff every Definitely. day. You know? Don't worry, we'll campaign on WhatsApp yeah. there for okay, the endorsement. Cool. cool. Um, various people want to marry you from our channel. That's good. Um, Everyone should marry me. That's fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> so just letting you know, um, we will not share their numbers with you I at would all. like, a, uh, this is a, a friend of mine has this gag and yeah. I, th I think I'm, it's applicable, Gilly Apta. She says, I'd like a three months bank statement, uh, proof <laughs> of residence. Okay, we uh, can organize that on WhatsApp. Okay. We'll filter them for you and then we'll WhatsApp those to you. So there was a study that said that uh, marriages that have the same, I think we had this conversation mm. with your wife, um, mm. that marriages that have the same political view have yeah. a longer uh, they have mm. more longevity than people with the same religious view ah. or couples that have the same religious view which is quite interesting I love what you said like I've never thought about like what it must be like to date as a progressive white person oh. and it's like it's a disaster like it's an absolute because no you just wait find. for that racist moment <laughs> you're sitting at like you just wait like so I, I, I'm, I, I'm trying to buy my first purchase as a, as a homeowner which mm. at 35 as a white South African is quite disappointing mm. considering all my privilege but I made a lot of disasters and I'm an artist so just <laughs> relax guys but and I you've got the frames and so I've got fine. the frames just exactly the frames so into you the know house. what I'm saying so um, I, I was you know there's carpets and they're like 
you know what, if you lift these carpets, you can just get like some African gentlemen to, to lift the carpets. And I was like, African gentlemen to lift the carpets? You mean carpet removers? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, the, why do you have to make yeah. it a race thing? Just yeah. say it what it is. Those are carpet removers. Sure. That's a service. You know, um, the, the, the black lady that cleans my house. You mean your housekeeper? Mm. Oh, okay. Mm, That's, mm, you know, mm. like, you yeah. don't say the, the, lesbian indian mm. woman that does my books you say mm. uh my accountant my accountant you mm. know what i'm saying yeah. like stop stop like trying to other people sure just sure. if that's your job then refer to the thing as the thing yeah yeah well you mm. are just one of the most interesting people in our country at the moment i think and thanks for joining us before it was cool uh, Thank you. Because, yeah, now everyone wants in. But, like, we had a conversation about this when it was still an idea. Um, so, you know, just to wrap up, why should young people vote? Um, oh, you know what's disappointing for me? Uh, so there's a long history be behind my registration of voting. Anyway, long hmm. story. But, you know, I was crazy and I lost my ID book twice. Uh, okay. But people, there's only 500,000 new registered voters, mm. which is a depressing statistic yeah. so we're saying we, we talk we talk about we put all this time and energy behind the actual vote mm. but what we've forgotten to do is to get the youth to register and invest yeah, okay. so w if we don't have these conversations if you and I and this yeah. is why I thank you so much for doing this mm. because um, if we don't entice the youth into understanding the importance of their right to vote mm. Uh, then what's the point? And so then we can't turn around and be like, oh, we're not taken seriously. There are no young people in cabinet. Exactly. When we're not bringing our power to bear. Absolutely. Right? So we can say, ah, there's geriatrics in, in parliament. Yeah, mm. but what are you doing? Mm. You're sitting at home watching carte blanche and being depressed. Mm. Relax. <laughs> no, no doubt. Um, I heard you were in the hip hop crew at school. Yes. I was, uh, I mean, I was in a rap crew um, from like, so I started rapping. My MC name was McNasty because my oh, initials snap. are N A Hasty. Oh, Nasty. Snap. McNasty to my Nina. Yes, to my Nina. Send me. <laughs> Send this Nina. And also, so I was telling you, I, I forgot. I wanted to make shirts, and so I'm gonna make to my Nina shirts, and then start a little foundation, buy the to my Nina shirts, and then we'll send the money somewhere. We don't know where we'll yet. Tumor it we'll tumor it yeah. somewhere. Mm. No, that'd that'd be dope. So I was wondering, like if there was a politician yes. who you'd like to feature on a track with or feature on your track? Oh, Razzmatazz, man. Oh, I mean, because he and would then, be gay. And you call it Tumanina and it's done. D you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Tumanina. Okay. Uh, well, <laughs> who else? Who else? Actually, yeah. I mean, this is going to sound... Okay. This is going to sound... Okay. I'd be interested in having like a Floyd or a... Um, even... Um, Sure. Actually, this is so interesting. And then you get like different people to feature on different cool. uh, different verses as well, oh, you know. Or, or there could be like a rap battle. A rap on battle, the track. A, and like a, a beef tracks as well, and you then know. You come in on the chorus. Too many. Yeah, 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 yeah. Too many. Boy Seni as well. I think he could probably like rap. I yeah, think he could, you I know. Mean, but I mean, bars. yeah, without yeah. a doubt. Okay. Well, we, we look forward to the shirts. Thank we you. Look forward to the track. Thank you. And look forward to seeing what incredible things you continue to do. Thank you very much. And also, if there's going to be uh, questions after this that people send, I'm very interested in hearing them. And I wouldn't mind having another conversation with you again. And share this with your friends. I think this is so important. This is so important. I'm very proud of you. Thank you so much. Cool. And just like Nina said, subscribe, like, share, and share on WhatsApp. And let's build our own platform and spread the fire. Boom. SMWX. No young people are around the decision-making table. Let some new voices come to the fore. Follow us on WhatsApp and catch us live Tuesdays and Thursdays. Out with the old, in with the new. SMWX.